Greetings. You must be Anna Myers. Guten Abend. Yes, I am Anna. I am Otto. Otto Reger, owner and manager of the hotel. Welcome. I hope you enjoyed your stay. How was your journey? Uh, not so good. Uh, the snow was very heavy. And I've seen some snowstorms. <laughs> Meine liebe Dame, let, let me take your bags. We can have tea in the dining hall. Thank you, Herr Reger. Anna, come with me to the dining hall. Your tea is served. So, what brings you here? I try to get to the Alps every winter. Oh, they're wonderful this time of year. Do you work, Anna? I write for a magazine in Zurich. How interesting. What do you write about? Politics. Sometimes I write about my passion, crime. How intriguing. Anna, some very strange things have been happening here in the hotel. Uh, would you help me investigate? Of course. What is going on? Ah, little things. Often difficult to explain. For example, the hotel keys. Poof! They vanish. And then, poof! They reappear. How curious. Yeah. But yesterday, a photo album with pictures of all of the guests disappeared. When did it go missing? Yesterday. Shall I help you look around? Yeah, yeah, come with me to the reception desk. Look, another key is missing. Maybe it's somewhere here. Let me see. I found a key. Let me see. Yes, that is the missing key. I must be tired. Thank you, Anna. You're welcome, Otto. Did you, by any chance, see a top hat and an umbrella? And Mr. Peterson has lost them somewhere. Who is Mr. Peterson? A very wealthy guest from Munich. Uh, you shall meet him tomorrow. Uh, could you help me search for them? I think he left them outside the hotel. They are probably covered in snow. I would be happy to help. Great! I found a top hat. Great. 
Wait, I found an umbrella. Wunderbar. You found them. Danke. Thank you. I will give them to Mr. Peterson. Now, if you will excuse me, I am very tired. Do you mind if I have a look around? Of course not. Uh, you can go to the hall, play some board games and relax next to the fireplace. That sounds wonderful. Thank you. Good night, Anna. Good night, Otto. I think I will play solitaire.
What a good game. But now it is late. Before I go to bed, I will search for the missing photo album. Perhaps it is in the cupboard. I found a photo album. The photo album. But some of the photos are torn out. Anyway, I should go to bed. Otto said that my room is on the second floor, room number five. Nine o'clock already? I need to hurry for breakfast. Where is my hat? I cannot leave without it.
found a hat. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Anna. Meine Damen und Herren, please allow me to introduce our new guest, Anna Myers. So nice to meet you, Miss Myers. I am Giovanni Rossi. A pleasure, Mr. Rossi. Uh, this is Mr. Peterson from Munich. Guten Tag. And this is Claudia Perret, his nurse. Bonjour, Miss Myers. Professor Charles Clark from Scotland. Pleasure to meet you. Dr. Hartmann from Hamburg. Ben Anna, Frau Meyer. Walter McCain from the United States. Good morning, Anna. I am Father Lenz from Switzerland. And this is Ulla from Sweden. Hello, Anna. Professor Kinski has not come down yet. Ah, he probably drank too much whiskey and played too many games of cards last night. Or perhaps he had the romantic endeavor, Isanda. Oh, gentlemen, gentlemen, please, sir. It's our lady's present. Scusi. Anyway, it would be interesting to know how Professor Kinski is. He told me yesterday he was having heart problems. Perhaps someone should go and check on him. I can go. Where is his room? It's on the second floor, room number 10. I will see if he's there. Professor Kinski, my name is Anna Myers. Are you awake? The door is locked. I will see if there is a spare key. Is the professor in his room, Anna? I called out, but he did not respond. Maybe he's asleep. Perhaps. Let's get a key and see if he is in there. That's a good idea. There should be one in reception. Look, all the keys are missing again. Let's look around. We might find them. I found some cigarettes. I found cigarettes. Do you smoke, Otto? Nine. Uh, no. Let me see. Italian cigarettes? I wonder where they came from. I, uh... Ooh, uh, perhaps... Perhaps they are Giovanni's. He doesn't smoke as far as I know. There are no keys, gentlemen. I believe we should break the door to Professor Kinski's room. Something bad might have happened. I agree. Let's move. The door won't open. We need something sharp. Anna, would you go to the kitchen and get us a knife? Certainly. It's in the room, just below us.
Wait, I found a knife. Good. You found one. Give it to me, please. Great. This is just what we needed. Thanks, Anna. <gasps> is he? He's dead. Oh, my God. It looks like his heart is stopped. Maybe he was killed. No, I don't think so. The room was closed, and I don't see anything suspicious on his body. And the girl? Claudia? Yes. She told us that Professor Kinski complained about his heart. So it probably was a heart attack. This is terrible. It is. Walter, could you stay here? Anna, could you please go to reception and telephone the town police and call the ambulance? Absolutely. you call the police? The telephone does not seem to be working. Yeah, it's old. Sometimes the wires get crossed. Could you look into it? Certainly. I tried to fix the telephone, but it is still not working. Yeah, I'm afraid there was a lot of snow tonight. The telephone lines have been affected. What should we do? Anna, can you walk to the nearest town? It's only two miles away. I, I, I would really appreciate it. I will try. Examine it. <gasps> Great, I found a photo. Back so soon, Anna. No. There's a crashed car outside the gate, and the road is covered in snow. A car? Is anyone inside? Maybe they're injured or frozen. No, I checked. It was empty. Is there another way to reach the town? No, that's the only road. We had the same problem a few years ago, in the winter of 1928. What should we do? There's nothing we can do. We shall have to wait until the road is cleared. Look. I found something interesting. Yesterday, I found a photo album with some of the photos torn out. And just now... Hmm. Intriguing. Yes, but the most interesting part is this. Look at the photo. It's Professor Kinski. Let's go back to reception. I found something also. I found a photo that was torn to pieces. I'm sure it was taken from my photo album. Place the album and the photo you found on the table right here. We should try to rearrange the photo pieces so they fit the frame.
Now, rearrange the photo pieces. This is very interesting. The two photos are of Professor Kinski and Professor Clark. And Professor Kinski is dead. I don't know what to think about this. This is strange. Truly. Pardon me, Anna, but I have guests to attend to and uh, a dinner to prepare. Of course. We shall talk after dinner. Meine Damen und Herren, I have some news I need to share with you. We are cut off from the world. The blizzard was so severe, the only road to the outside is impassable. We should call the municipal authorities. They must come here as soon as possible. The telephone lines are dead, Father. As I said, we are completely cut off. Something similar happened to me in the Himalayas once. I was staying in a small village, and when a blizzard struck, found myself trapped. Oh, what were you doing in the Himalayas, Professor? We were looking for ancient artifacts. Anyway, how long does it usually take to clear the road, Otto? There are a couple of days. Two, maybe three maximum. Siamo neguai. Do we have enough of food to last that long? There's nothing to worry about, my Italian friend. We can last a month if needed. We have plenty of food and drink. Bellissimo! As long as we have food, the wine, and the beautiful ladies. I am content. Dalmoro, where is the bella Swedish lady? Ah, Ulla. Si, Ulla. And where is Dr. Hartman? I hope nothing has happened to either of them. Anna, we should go check on Dr. Hartman. His room was on this floor, room number two. Dr. Hartman is not here. This is strange. Hmm. Maybe Dr. Hartman is with Ulla in her room. A man in a wheelchair couldn't go to the second floor, could he? Yeah, klar. You are right. Anna, could you check Dr. Hartman's belongings? Maybe you will find something interesting. I'm on the case.
Great, I found a syringe. Mein Gott, upstairs, quickly, Ulla is dead. This cannot be happening. There is no pulse. Is she dead? Oh my God. Are you sure there is no pulse? Oh my God, what is going on here? Calm down, we need a doctor. Have you found Dr. Hartman? No. We need to know what happened here. How did she die? It looks like another heart attack. A heart attack? Again? This seems suspicious to me. I want to check this room. Great! I found a lighter. This lighter is still hot, as if it was used minutes ago. Do you think someone might have been here? Everything is possible, Otto. We need to find Dr. Hartman. I will try. Dr. Hartman. Anna, what is the trouble? Ulla is dead. Mein Gott. Where have you been? I... I was exploring the premises. Have you been to Ulla's room recently? In a wheelchair? Is it some kind of joke? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean... How did she die? We don't know. Claudia says it may be another heart attack. A heart attack, yes, that sounds correct. What do you mean? Never mind. If you have no more questions, then I would like to return to my book. Please excuse me. Anna, come and have some tea near the fireplace. On my way.
Where is everyone? It's late. While we are alone, I want to discuss something with the two of you. Yes? I have been running this hotel for 25 years. I have never seen two people dying. And in two days. And two heart attacks. This is just impossible. I agree with you, Otto. It's very unusual to say the least. Do you believe it is possible to simulate a heart attack? I believe it's quite possible, yes. And who would be able to do so? Someone with medical experience? Exactly. Now, two people were missing at dinner this evening. Ulla and Dr. Hartman. We found Ulla dead in her room. Did you find Dr. Hartman? Yes, I did. And he acted odd. He asked me what happened to Ulla. And when I informed him of her heart attack, he murmured, That sounds correct. I think he is somehow involved in all of this. I agree. But what should we do? I have an idea. If Ulla's heart attack was brought on, then we will probably find something in her room to prove it. We should also examine her body. Let's go then, shall we? Yes, we'll need a magnifying glass. Do you have one, Otto? Oh yes, it should be somewhere in the kitchen. Anna, can you go and find it? We will wait for you in Ulla's room. I found a magnifying glass. I found it. Great. Look here. Check Ulla's neck. I think someone injected her. Please, let me. See? She was definitely killed. I'm sure about it. By the way, do you see that liquid on the floor? Yes. Judging by the smell, I would guess it is some kind of acid. We need to pour some baking soda on it. You can find soda in the kitchen. some baking soda. What did I tell you? This is acid. I am sure it was somehow used to kill poor Ulla. And Professor Kinski? Do you think he was killed as well? That's a good question, Anna. I think we should go and examine his body. Hmm. 
Anna, come and see. There are marks on Professor Kinski's neck also. These marks? Hmm. Yes, Anna. These are the same marks we found on Ulla. Professor Kinski has also been murdered. But why? That is something we must find out. Let's inspect his luggage. I can't open it. It has a strange lock. Let me try.
I found a coin. Have you found anything, Anna? It is all very messy, as if someone was looking for something in a hurry. Yes, I'm sure it has been tampered with. And look at the coin I found. It is very unusual. I've never seen anything like this. Anna, could you show it to Professor Clark? He might know something about it. What is his research interest? Oh, Professor Clark, he's one of the brightest archaeologists of our time. He is studying the Indian occult. And if anyone knows anything about this coin, it will be him. What do you think, Walter? I'm pretty sure both Ola and Professor Kinski were murdered. I just don't know why. The killer is among us. Due to the snowstorm, nobody could enter or leave the hotel. I agree. So, who do you suspect? Dr. Hartman looks suspicious to me. Think about it. When Ulla was killed, he was also missing. When we went looking for him, he wasn't in his room. But Ulla was killed on the second floor, and Dr. Hartman could not go up the stairs in his wheelchair. What if this is just a cover-up? Dr. Hartman looks very suspicious. We should keep an eye on him. I agree. Agreed. Good morning, Anna. Breakfast is ready. Good morning. I'm coming. Good morning, gentlemen. Sorry for the delay. Good morning, dear. That's perfectly all right. Professor Clark, I have been told you study ancient Indian religions. I am very proud to be considered an expert in my field. Can you? So many breakthroughs have been made in recent years, and the general public is not even aware of them. These matters are of the greatest importance. Take Vedism, for example. Do you know anything about Vedism, Anna? To be honest, no. Ah, you see? And what is so important about Vedism? Well, let me put it this way. On my last expedition to northern India and Tibet, I found something of great power. A recipe for an ancient Vedic ritual drink, which was lost for thousands of years. And what is so exciting about the recipe? As they say in Rig Veda, we have drunk Soma and become immortal. We have attained the light the gods discovered. I don't understand. Immortality! I have discovered immortality in a drink, Mr. Peterson. At least, that is what the ancient scripts claim. And does it actually work? I don't know yet, but a new breakthrough could change everything. Blasphemy! I don't believe in any of these tales. They are myths and nothing else. I am not trying to convince anyone of anything, but this might be one of the greatest discoveries of all time. Let me show you. Anna, could you please fetch me some alcohol? Look in the cupboard, Anna. There should be some there. All right.
I found some alcohol. Ladies and gentlemen, what you're about to witness is extraordinary. Behold the beauty of Soma. Anna, pour some alcohol onto the tablet and set it on fire. But nothing has happened. Ah, yes. My memory plays games with me sometimes. We need a special Hindu coin. And I don't think I'll find it quickly. I think I have one. Where did you get it? It's a long story. Should I put it there? Please do. Look, I think this will work. Let me try. Is so amusing, Professor Clark. Are we immortal? No, no. Oh, no. I haven't yet figured out where to get all of the ingredients for soap. But wasn't it magnificent? Very nice, Professor. Oh, <laughs> such entertainment. Exciting. Thanks. Thank you. Dr. Hartman, what do you think of Soma? As I've already said, Otto, I don't believe in it. Do you think it could have helped Professor Kinski and Ulla yesterday? I... Professor Clark, can Soma resurrect the dead? It is hard to say, to be honest. So now, Professor Kinski and Ulla are dead. It will not help them. I see. What do you mean, Otto? Did they die of natural causes or were they killed? It looks as if they both died of a heart attack. But what do you think? I don't know. Dr. Hartman, where were you yesterday when Willow was killed? I was looking around. Where exactly? Is this... is this an interrogation? Can you answer my question? I need to go to the bathroom, if you'll excuse me. A most interesting individual. Don't be so hard on him, Otto. But why will he not tell us where he was yesterday? Relax, Otto. His actions may be innocent, eh? What do you mean, Father Lenz? Uh, never mind. It's between me and Otto. All right, Madame Dominic and Helen. Breakfast is over. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Otto. What are your plans for today, Anna? I think I will go for a walk. I just need to get a scarf from my room. Be careful, Anna. Dr. Hartman has been looking suspiciously at you. I will, Otto. It is too cold outside. I need to fetch a scarf from my room. Great! I found a scarf. Is this a note? Hmm. 
Well, this looks like a code. I believe the first word is meat. I need to just to decipher the rest of the message. The note says, meet me at the backyard at 11. Doctor. Hmm. I wonder what he wants. Oh my, it is 11.05. I should hurry to the backyard. I found a flashlight. Dr. Hartman? Hello? This is his wheelchair, and there is blood everywhere. I can't see anything in here. I need to use my flashlight. Dr. Hartman! Walter! What are you doing here? What happened to Dr. Hartman? That is exactly what I was going to ask you. Is he dead? Yes, he is. Murdered. Did you kill him? No! Then why do you have a gun? Anna, please. I know how it looks, but I swear I didn't kill him. Then what are you doing here? And why are you here? Walter, the gun in your hand and the dead man with a gunshot wound means you are not in a position to demand answers from me. Well, okay. I got a rather strange note from the doctor. After figuring out his writing, I understood he wanted to show me something here at 11. Now, your turn. Can you show me the note? Here. I got exactly the same note. 
I don't understand this. Is this some kind of sick joke? I do not know. But Dr. Hartman is dead. And that means he could not be the one who killed Professor Kinski and Ulla. Let's go inside the cellar. Perhaps we could find something important. It is too dark in here. I need to turn on the lights. of cigarettes. Otto doesn't even smoke. Look, they are the same brand as the pack I found earlier. Let me see. Strange. That is the same brand of cigarettes. Yes, but we need to focus on finding clues to Dr. Hartman's death. All right, you do that and I'll run to the hotel to check if everyone is there. I found the clock face. We have been waiting for you, Anna. Meine Damen und Herren. What now, Otto? Walter, please. I don't know how to say this, but Dr. Hartman is dead. What? Where? How? We found his body in the cellar. Oh my God, I'm so scared. I want to get out of here. Walter, how do you know he was killed? The gunshot wounds. His wheelchair was found nearby. Outside the cellar? Yes. Was there anything else uh, suspicious? Well, there was something strange. A few big boxes of cigarettes. I don't think that is relevant, Walter. May I ask, Anna, what you were doing there? 
I was supposed to meet Dr. Hartman in the cellar. But when I got there, he was already dead. Now, please, everyone stay here. I need to go to reception and get the guest list. the guest list. Did you find the guest list? Yes, here it is. I checked the list and it looks like everyone is here. Pay attention, everyone. This is what we know so far. Dr. Hartman, Ulla, and Professor Kinski were killed, and nobody could enter or leave the hotel. Therefore, the killer is among us. Oh, I'm so scared. We don't know how or why the killer is doing this, so we must all concentrate and focus. Has anything strange happened to anyone over the last few days? Yes. When I got back from break, some casone had ripped open my luggage and dropped everything all over the floor. Now I cannot find my favorite shoes. But you didn't see anyone. No. Passport. Sorry, Professor? My passport. What about it? I couldn't find my passport today. I thought I mislaid it, but now I think someone must have taken it. Odd. My German visa. Damn. I will not be able to attend the conference. What conference? A conference in Heidelberg. I was invited to give a speech about the connection between ancient Indian religions and modern German aspirations. Anyone else? I'm stuck here! Professor, relax. Anyone else? Well, yeah, I know how this will sound, but my gun has disappeared. When did this happen? I am not absolutely sure, but I think it happened early this morning before breakfast. What caliber is it? A 7.65 Mauser. And you cannot find it? Alas, none. Huh. Anyone else? Anna, let's go to the cellar. We might find bullet casings. Please, all of you be careful. Anna, 
Could you please search over there? Maybe we could find bullet casings. I found some bullet casings. Look, 7.65 caliber. I found them. Let me see. So, Dr. Hartman was killed by Mr. Peterson's gun. Otto, I want to tell you something. Yes, Anna? When I arrived here to meet Dr. Hartman, he was already dead. And Walter was here before me. He was standing over the corpse with a gun. Did he explain why he was there? He told me he received a message from Dr. Hartman. Do you think, Walter? His behavior is suspicious. You might be right. We must be careful with him. What you are saying, Professor Clark, is very interesting. But from a Christian point of view, it does not make sense. It does, and I'll tell you why. You see, we need to embrace science and be more open-minded. Ancient Indian manuscripts clearly state it is possible to create soma. All we need to do is formulate the ingredients correctly. Professor, imagine for a moment the recipe actually works. What if it gets into the hands of opportunistic or evil-minded people? What happens? A very good question, Father. I know a number of high-ranking officials in Germany have also sponsored expeditions to find a formula for Soma in Tibet. How do you know this? I have been advised through several channels. So, what do you think? Well, I can say that the German Nazi party is controversial, to say the least. Sorry to interrupt, gentlemen. But I have also heard the Nazi party has been looking into Eastern and Western occult practices. I would be very careful if I were you, Professor. I agree. The Nazi party does not play around. By the way, 
I have not seen Claudia, Volta, or Giovanni in a while. I hope so. Help! Oh my god! Claudia! Claudia, what happened? Someone attacked me! Walter, what are you doing here? I was going downstairs for dinner and heard Claudia scream, so I got here as quickly as I could. Thank you, Walter, for helping my... Um, Claudia, are you all right? Yes, Mr. Peterson, just a little dizzy. Claudia, did you see who attacked you? No, oh, I'm so scared. Don't worry, Claudia. We will find out who did this to you. Walter, did you see anyone leaving Claudia's room? No, I didn't, which is strange. It is. Especially since you were the first on the scene. Otto, please. Apologies. We need to search the room. Maybe we will find something interesting. Claudia, do you mind? Of course not. Great! I found a medicine chest. I should place that medicine chest on the couch and look inside. Hmm. Looks like the syringe I found in Dr. Hartman's room is from this chest. I need to get everything in order and see if the syringe fits. fits perfectly. Claudia? Yes, Anna? When I searched Dr. Hartman's room, I found a syringe. And it fits perfectly into your medical chest. Does anyone else have access to the chest? I'm not sure, but I think someone was in my room yesterday. While I was out on a walk. Do you know who it was? No. But I think it was Dr. Hartman. Thank you, Claudia. 
This doesn't make any sense. Dr. Hartman in a wheelchair on the second floor. Ella, could you please come to reception? I want to show you something. I examined the bullet casings you found in the backyard. Something does not add up. What do you mean? They seem very light for their caliber. And what does that mean? It means they were custom made. Therefore, they were probably fired from a custom-made gun. Are you sure? You can use my weighing scale and see for yourself. You are right, Otto. They do look strange. What is it, Anna? Oh, Claudia. I did not see you there. We have just learned that the bullet casings found near Dr. Hartman are custom made. Actually, I wanted to talk to you about something similar. Yes? Did you see Walter's gun? No. It is custom made. And when I screamed while being attacked, Walter arrived almost instantly. And Walter was with Dr. Hartman when he was killed. So, so many coincidences. That is what I'm trying to say. Maybe we should tie him up or something. No, that is not a good idea. We have no proof, but we should watch him closely. I agree. Now, I want to check the cellar again. But why? It is scary enough here. Even more reason. Good night.
I found a pocket mirror. What an interesting item. I wonder how it got here. I need to look for more clues in the cellar. Great! I found the gloves. To my beloved Walter. Walter has been here. Something is not right. I'm trapped. I need to get out of here. I need to figure out how to open the door. The door is open. I wonder who locked me in. Fresh shoe prints. A man's shoes. Very interesting. It is so late. Time for bed. How fine to be alive. I wonder who was trying to scare me last night. I need to hurry to breakfast. There may be some new developments. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Anna. Thank God you are well. One year ago, we were starting to worry. I'm fine, gentlemen. Am I the last one down? No, we are still waiting for Mr. Peterson, but I'm sure he'll arrive soon. While we're waiting for Mr. Peterson, I want to tell you about something that happened to me last night. What happened? It was late. I don't know, 11, maybe 12 o'clock. I was reading, and then suddenly the lights went out. But during snowstorms, lights do go out sometimes, Father. The strange thing is that the lights only went out in my room. How do you know the lights only went out in your room? Because I went to the hall and met Giovanni there. He told me that the lights in his room were working fine. Giovanni? <laughs> yes. No, I, I mean, I do not really remember. I was asleep and woke up hungry, so I went downstairs, grabbed a few snacks, and went back to bed. What time was that? 
I don't remember. Anna, do you remember where you are all of the time? No. See? Me neither. I am a bad with time. I remember that I had a couple of slices of meat and a glass of wine. That is all. Gentlemen, Mr. Peterson is still not here. I think we should go upstairs and check for him. Mr. Peterson is not here. Something is not right. He always comes for breakfast at 8 o'clock sharp. I am worried. I think we'd better search the hotel. And maybe outside as well. I agree. I just want to check something in Professor Kinsky's room. What is it, Anna? Can I help you? No, it's fine. not add up. I need to start from the very beginning. Professor Kinsky was killed on the first night. I need to check his room again to see if I can find anything new. Great! I found a gun! I have never seen a gun like this. It looks like it is loaded with the same bullets I found near Dr. Hartman. Now I am confused. I should go and check Ulla's room again. Something has changed since I was last here. I photographed this room for my diary. I need to compare how the room looks now with that photo.
<laughs> How odd. The clock face is missing. I will try to put the one I found in the yard in the frame and see if it fits. Yes, that is the clock face from the photo. Someone has taken it from here. Why? I shall join Otto and the others and see what they have found. They should be outside. Anna, come quickly! Have you found Mr. Peterson? I heard screams. Something is not right. <laughs> is he? Yes, Anna. Mr. Peterson is dead. Someone stabbed him with a knife. It is suicide. What do you mean? He has killed himself. Why do you think he killed himself? He killed himself because of me. Because he loved me. What are you talking about, Claudia? He loved me. And so he killed himself. I doubt he killed himself. He seemed a strong man. Yes, he was. But I did not love him, and he couldn't bear it anymore. So he killed himself. I am sure of it. It is freezing. Let's return to the hotel and discuss it there. Yes, we are of no help to Mr. Peterson now. You go ahead, while I search for clues here. I will stay with you, Anna. Father, I don't believe Mr. Peterson could kill himself. Yes, it looks strange to me, too. But what should we do? I do not know. There is nothing suspicious here. We should check the backyard. Someone was standing here. How do you know? Do you see the cigarette butts all over the place? They are fresh. Right. Someone was here. Did Mr. Peterson smoke? Oh, yes. He is, uh, was, a heavy smoker. So it was probably him. Let's look around. a broken record look what I found what is it it is most interesting a gramophone record of La Scala oh that is not so interesting a lot of records are released in Milan have a look at this lead singer Giovanni Rossi our Giovanni yes and I believe this record was unreleased what do you think, Anna? I'm not certain, Father, but I am sure all of these events are connected. Let's return to the hotel.
Meine Damen und Herren, as you know, Mr. Peterson has been found dead with a knife in his chest. Oh my God! Some people think he committed suicide. He did. Given the number of recent sudden deaths, I wouldn't be so sure. What do you know, Walter? Well, Dr. Hartman was shot to death but had no gun. How do you think he died? Well, the situation is now very serious. We cannot reach the police, and so we need to investigate this on our own. Did anyone see anything suspicious last night? The lights went out. We know that. Did anybody see anything else that was strange? No, nothing at all, Otto. I was sleeping like a baby. All right, another question. Did everybody stay in their rooms all night? Yes. Where else would I have been? Yes. Are you sure, Walter? Yes, Otto. After returning from my evening walk, I never left my room. Great. What about you, Claudia? Excuse me? What was the question? Did you spend last night in your room? What? Of course I did. <laughs> no, no, Claudia, please. I, I didn't mean anything wrong. I, I, I'm sorry. Ridiculous. And you, Giovanni? I, 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 I was... I, I was in my room. After a few slices of meat and a glass of wine, I, I, I was in my room. Yes. All right. So everybody was inside. And yet, Mr. Peterson is dead. So, what do we do now? Try to stay together. Otto is right. I'm going outside to check a few things. Who wants to go with me? May I join you? Of course. Meet me near the cellar. Excuse me, meine Damen. I decided to join you. Certainly, Otto. So, what do you think of all this? I am very suspicious of Walter. Do you agree? Yes. Remember how he reacted to my idea that Mr. Peterson killed himself? Yes, that was interesting. And when he explained how the others died... But he was so sure. Almost like he did it. By the way, I found Walter's gloves in the cellar the other day. Right after Dr. Hartman's death. We need to do something about Walter. I suggest we go look for more clues inside the cellar. Anna, look for anything suspicious.
Wait, I found a passport. Look, Professor Clark's passport. The one he lost. What is it doing here? How did I miss it the first time? After all, I did find Walter's gloves. I told you we need to do something about him, and quickly. I suggest we go to his room and check his belongings. It is room number nine. Did you find anything? I would never have guessed Walter liked books. What is it, Claudia? Professor Clark's book. And it looks like Walter has read it. A lot. Interesting. Anything else? Otto? No, I found nothing of interest. I wonder where Walter is now. I think we should check on Professor Clark as quickly as possible. He should be in room number one. Walter, what are you doing here? What do you mean? What are you doing in Professor Clark's room? It's all right, Claudia. I'm explaining the difference between Vedism and Brahmanism to Walter. What's wrong, Claudia? We found Professor Clark's book in your room. What was it doing there? Oh, you've been in my room without permission. Nice. We are sorry, Walter. Can you answer her question? What's wrong with me having Professor Clark's book? I'm a huge fan. I've read all of his books. We didn't know that. Well, now you do, I guess. May I ask you a question, Claudia? Go on. Mr. Peterson told me yesterday that he wanted to show me something important. Do you know anything about it? No. All right, one more question. When Otto asked everyone if they had spent all night in their rooms, you told everyone you had. Well... Why did you lie? I know your room was empty this morning. Uh... Furthermore, I know you were with Giovanni. It's not what you think. I, I can explain. Please do. I think Anna, Professor Clark and Otto are keen to know what happened. I was alone. It was night. All the murders, the whole situation made me very nervous. I was afraid. I wanted company. Everyone was asleep except... Giovanni, who also lied. Please don't blame him. It was my idea. And that is why Mr. Peterson committed suicide. He was in love with me. And when he saw me with Giovanni, he couldn't bear it. He killed himself. If we should go to Giovanni's room immediately. What happened here? This room is a mess. And no sign of Giovanni. Claudia, where is he? I don't know. We should check this room. We might find something useful.
I found some record pieces. Otto, look. These are pieces of the broken record we found outside. It means Giovanni was there when Mr. Peterson was killed. Are you sure it's the same record? I am pretty sure, yes. But we can glue the pieces together on a gramophone to be sure. Let's see. See? It is the record. Oh my god. It means Giovanni was at the crime scene. And he wanted to get rid of this record for some reason. But where is Giovanni? It's very cold and we're all tired. I think we should rest for a bit. If he doesn't appear soon, we'll organize a search party. I agree. It will be dark soon, and the temperature is falling. Have a good rest, and then we will go and look for Giovanni. Did you all have a good rest? Yes. Any word on Giovanni? No. We should go. I suggest we split into two groups. Otto and I will search near the cellar and warehouse. Claudia and Walter should search near the cabin. Sounds like a plan. Let's go, Claudia.
Anna, look. Someone is inside. We need to check who is there. Are you ready? Do I have a choice? Hello, you two. Giovanni, what are you doing here? Why do you have a bottle of wine in your hand? My wine, by the way. This is not what you think. Please, let me explain. I will not tolerate stealing, Giovanni. Otto, this is not a stealing. Please, please, let me explain. Go ahead. You see, gentlemen, sorry, and I wasn't completely honest with you earlier today when I told you I was alone the last night. Oh, really? And how does this explain your stealing? Otto, please, go on, Giovanni. In the middle of the night, I was visited by Miss Perret. She is an incredible woman. I fell in love with her instantly. We talked all night. Talked? Well, mostly. But that's not the point. My head was spinning and spinning around like crazy. And I decided to take a long walk after dinner. And on my walking, I decided that I am going to propose. Oh, dear. Otto, he is totally drunk. He can barely speak. I wanted it to be romantic, so I need a bottle of red wine. At the same time, I don't want anyone to know before Claudia accepts my proposal. So I need to get the wine quietly. I came here, I took a bottle, and I left the money over there. I hope it is... You left some money? Yes, over there, in, in the corner. Giovanni. This is a most interesting story, but it is not what we wanted to talk to you about. What has happened? We have some suspicions about you. Otto, could you please take Giovanni inside? Everyone is waiting. Of course. What is going on? I will look around and return inside as soon as I can. All right. Great! I found a bow tie. A bow tie? Like opera singers wear. This means Giovanni was here. And he is probably lying about the wine. What a chameleon! I must hurry to the hotel. anything useful, Anna? I think I did. Giovanni, I hope you are sober. I have often wondered if opera singers wear bow ties. I am feeling much better, Anna. Thank you. Occasionally, yes, we do. Why are you asking? I think you have mislaid yours. I do not think so. I think 
think this is minor? Yes. So what? Nothing. Except it proves that you were outside this morning, precisely when Mr. Peterson was killed. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Giovanni, you were outside the cellar this morning. We found a La Scala record there with your name on it. It was not there yesterday. What a record? What are you talking about? The only record I made was cancelled recently, thanks to Mr. Blah. Well, it doesn't matter. When was it cancelled? It doesn't matter, really. Giovanni, can you tell us if you were near the cellar today? No, I was not. But we just saw you in the cellar. I mean, I was not there before you saw me. Giovanni, did you kill Mr. Peterson? <laughs> what? God, no, I want to go to my room. No, you stay here. Walter, help me, please. Let go of me, you imbeciles! Otto, let's tie him up. Let go of me! You are the wrong man! I have done nothing! I did not kill anyone! No me rompere, coglioni! Then who is the right man? I do not know! Let go of me! God. I shall leave you all to it and go and examine Giovanni's room. I need to look for clues in this room. I am sure I will find something. a gun case have you found anything I think so a case for a strange gun wait I think it is for the gun I found hold the case open for me yes it is the right one so Giovanni has the case for the gun which was used to kill dr. Hartman So Giovanni is the killer. I think he might be. Otto, can you keep this case in a safe place until the police arrive? Yes. Now I need to search Dr. Hartman's room. There might be something there I missed. This is the room. I should look for clues here. Great, I found a shoe. Made in Italy. 
what did I say? Hmm, the sole of this shoe looks familiar. I should check this with the shoe prints made when I was locked in the cellar. I was just asking Walter what he thinks about Giovanni. I was surprised, to be honest. I was surprised as well, but we do have evidence against him. I found his shoe in Dr. Hartman's room. Well done. Anna, what are you doing with the shoe? I want to see if it matches the shoe prints outside the cellar. The shoe prints? Okay, let's see. This shoe matches the prints left here last night. What are you talking about? Never mind, Walter. I think we should get some sleep. Yes, but first, let's check our prisoner. You will stay here all night, do you hear me? Murderer. Let's go to bed. I hope the road will be cleared tomorrow and that this hell will end. I hope so. Oh my god! What now? wasn't the killer after all. Neither is Giovanni. <laughs> I think we can untie him now. Oh, 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 mio Dio. Giovanni, what happened here? Mio Dio, please help me. Giovanni, calm down. I'm ruined. Nobody will ever come here again. Never. Otto, please. Giovanni. What happened? I do not know. Mio Dio, I was asleep. And when I opened my eyes, Walter was dead beside me. Did you see anyone? No! Are you sure? Mio Dio, yes! I did not see or hear anything. Listen to me, everyone. At one point, we were convinced Walter was the killer. Then we thought the killer was Giovanni. But they still could have been killers. No. There is another murderer, and he is among us. God help us all. I am going to search the premises for more clues. I propose you all stay in this room until I return. Agreed? Agreed. I will personally make sure that no one leaves this room. Thank you, Otto. Oh, one question. Yes? I would like to check the cabin in the mountains. Is it open? It is sealed tight. Take the X from the kitchen with you. Mm. 
Anna, I didn't want to say this in front of all the guests. What is it? The phone line is working again. The road will be cleared in a few hours, and... And? And if the murder is not found by then, I am doomed. Nobody will ever come here again. There will be stories. Gruesome stories about the mysterious murders in Hotel Rega, which were never solved. Try not to worry, Otto. I have some ideas. I just need a little more time to be certain. Oh, I will be in your debt, Anna. Could you open the back door to the kitchen? Certainly. I closed that door before I went to bed last night. Could you go to reception and take the key from the table? I don't want to leave my guests on their own for too long. Of course. There is the key Otto was talking about. I should not touch this liquid with my bare hands. It could be dangerous. Gloves would be useful. some keys. I found an axe. I need to check the cabin near the hotel. I found a shovel.
found a telescope. I wonder if it is at all possible to communicate with the tower. I will use that telescope with a mirror from the attic. possible to communicate with the town. Using the telescope and mirror, I could send light signals to the town. Try sending light messages using the mirror. Bingo! Someone is trying to send a message. Just as I thought. Now I should return to the hotel and talk to Otto. Can I have a word with you? Of course. Did you find anything interesting? I think so, yes. What is it? I just need to check one more thing. And then I will be ready to name the murderer. I just need to examine Claudia's and Dr. Hartman's rooms. Great! I found a postcard. Munich. That is what I thought. And I need to check Dr. Hartman's room one more time.
Wait, I found a letter. A letter? To customs authorities? While I was... discovered a secret operation. Cigarettes and alcohol. Everything is clear now. Time to catch a killer. Anna, did you find anything? I think I did. Yes. Have the police arrived yet? What? No, not yet. But they will be here very soon. I need to pack my bags. Claudia, please sit down. We have some time before the police arrive and can examine the results of my investigation. What investigation? I became suspicious after the death of Professor Kinski. And then, when Ulla died, I was certain they were both killed. Problem was, everyone sitting here had a motive to kill either one or the other. What do you mean, Anne? What kind of a motive could I have? Very well, Giovanni. I shall start with you. You are an opera singer in La Scala, although not a very successful one. Anne, that is none of your business. Nevertheless, you were hoping for a promotion, and you were this close to releasing a record, but suddenly everything collapsed, thanks to Mr. Peterson. What? You see, Mr. Peterson has always taken an interest in opera, and being a wealthy industrialist, was able to provide money to theatres across Europe, including La Scala. He disliked Giovanni's last performance, and demanded La Scala cancel his record and promote another singer instead. Isn't this so, Giovanni? It is true. It is true. But it does not mean I killed him. I cannot believe this. What a shame, Giovanni. Mr. Peterson ruined your professional career, and you were angry. <sighs> it's getting cold in here. The fire needs more wood. That's better. Do you know who the killer is, Anna? I think I do. By the way, were you surprised I found a Hindu coin in Professor Kinski's room? What do you mean? Did you know Professor Kinski? Well, I... sort of. Ladies and gentlemen, what Professor Clark is trying to say is that he and Professor Adam Kinski were students at the same university, and formerly very good friends. But a girl you were going to marry ran away with Professor Kinski. I... How did you discover this, Anna? By searching Professor Kinski's luggage. Isn't it true you had threatened him before this? Well, yes. But I swear I didn't kill him. In fact, when he saw me, he decided to leave. But then, he died. How convenient. I told you it wasn't me. Murderer! I didn't do it, honestly. I was as surprised as you. But you were glad he was dead. Anna, please. Otto, I almost forgot about you. What? Did I also kill Professor Kinski? No. However, you do have a nice little smuggling operation going on here. What? At first, I was confused by all the cigarettes in the cellar. But then I realized. Do you remember the day Dr. Hartman was killed? When he gave a note to me and Walter? Oh, my God! Otto! I thought Dr. Hartman had something to tell us about the killings. But he had discovered your smuggling operation and wanted to talk to us about it. How do you know that, Anna? I found a letter. Here it is. What do you think, Father? Well, I uh, don't think what is written here is true. Why? Because he thinks you were also involved in the smuggling? What? Are you mad? I remember how worried you were when Dr. Hartman was killed, and asked if we had uncovered anything suspicious. Now I understand your real fear was that we would find out about you. 
Father, is this true? I... Uh, uh, I... He was helping Otto to communicate with customers. He travels a lot around this area and knows local people. Very convenient. And then Dr. Hartman found out and he died. Anna, it is not what you think. I'm speechless, gentlemen. To kill a man because he uncovered your smuggling operation was cruel punishment. We didn't kill him. In fact, we didn't even know he discovered. Oh, never mind. What a shame. Sadly, it is, yes. Well, Anna, it is a relief to know all the criminals have been found. But now, please excuse me. I need to pack my bag and leave this place as soon as the road is cleared. Well played, Claudia. To be honest, I admire your skill. What are you talking about? Have you seen this postcard? Nice postcard. What is so special about it? Do you recognize the city? It is Munich. Everyone can see that. I wonder why you have a postcard of Munich. Anna, I do not have time for these silly questions. I must leave. Anna, what are you doing? Let her go. Gentlemen, please, let me tell you Claudia's story. I promise you will not be disappointed. This is ridiculous. Claudia Kopp was born in Munich. Claudia, you told me you were French. And why did she call you Claudia Kopp when your last name is Perret? Kopp is her maiden name. She got married in France and became Claudia Perret. After she divorced her husband, she returned to Germany and joined a covert operations group, seeking to bring the Nazi party to power. What? Go on. She was introduced to Mr. Peterson and started working as his nurse. And so she gained access to his wealth and connections. Did she kill? In the covert operations group, she was part of the unit dealing with oriental religions, occultism, and their connections to Nazi symbolism and power. Her first task was to get in touch with a British professor who had just discovered a breakthrough in the search for immortality. What utter nonsense! This actually makes sense. I told you I was contacted a few times. Claudia knew the professor would be at this hotel, so she persuaded Mr. Peterson to come here for a short holiday. Mr. Peterson was sick, and doctors told us to go to the Alps. That is the only reason we came here. The only problem was that Claudia did not know what the professor looked like, and both Professor Clark and Professor Kinski were here. Time was of the essence, so Claudia had to act quickly. She tore out the photos from the guest photo album and stole the hotel keys so she would have access to all the rooms. So that explains the missing keys and the missing photographs. On the day I arrived, Claudia decided to check Professor Kinski's room. But alas, the professor returned to his room at a very unfortunate moment when Claudia was going through his luggage. That is the funniest thing I have ever heard. And then what? He saw me and had a heart attack? No. Professor Kinski threatened to report you to the police and tell all the guests you were a thief. So you had no other choice. And the next morning you remembered he complained about his heart. My God. I do not believe this. Claudia, is this true? This is a joke, father. Can you not see? She has accused us all. The only innocent person here is Anna. Anna, go on, please. It's a telephone. I will answer it, Otto. Good afternoon. May I speak to Miss Claudia Perez? Who is calling? Yes, but she's busy. Is she all right? Yes, yes. She's perfectly fine. Do you have a message? Yes. Please tell her that the plans have changed. What plans? She knows. What is your name? Helmut. Tell her Helmut. I will. Thank you and have a good day. Who 
was on the telephone? A man named Helmut. He was looking for Claudia. I do not know him. He asked me to tell you that the plans have changed. Plans? I don't know about any plans. Who is Helmut? I told you I do not know him. Anna, please continue. Where was I? Oh, yes. When Claudia killed Professor Kinski. Later that night, Ulla confided in Claudia that when she was younger, she worked as a nurse, and Professor Kinski's heart attack looked suspicious. Furthermore, Ulla discovered puncture marks on his neck that were probably made by a syringe. She also told Claudia that she planned to discuss it with Dr. Hartman. Mein Gott! After their conversation, Claudia decided to take care of Ulla. She acted quickly, and we discovered Ulla's body later that evening. Complete nonsense! The next morning, Dr. Hartman decided to investigate. As a doctor, it was obvious to him that something wasn't right, and he suspected that Professor Kinski and Ulla were both killed. Ironically, he discovered the smuggling operation during his investigation. Furthermore, he realized it was run by Otto with the help of Father Lenz. What a shame. As I said, it, it is not what you think it is. Oh, never mind. Anna, please, continue. Dr. Hartman wanted to share his findings and wrote two notes, one to me and one to Walter, asking us to come to the cellar at 11 o'clock where he wanted to show us the boxes full of cigarettes. Well, at least Dr. Hartman wasn't killed by me. On the contrary, Claudia, you knew Dr. Hartman discovered something, and so you decided to kill him as quickly as you could. You didn't have time to stage another heart attack, so you stole Mr. Peterson's gun, ran to the cellar, and shot him. Later, you put the gun case in Giovanni's room, and the gun in Professor Kinski's luggage. You confused us all. Walter found the body first, and took out his gun, and began to look around. When I entered the cellar, I saw Dr. Hartman's body, and Walter holding a gun. We argued, and after we searched the cellar, we left and informed everyone of Dr. Hartman's death. Nonsense! When we announced the death of Dr. Hartman, it turned out Giovanni was missing a pair of shoes. Professor Clark had mislaid his passport, and Mr. Peterson could not find his gun. But now we know what happened to Mr. Peterson's gun. But what about the shoes and the passport? We are almost there, Otto. Be patient, please. Did you find my passport, Anna? Yes, I did. Here it is. Later that day, Claudia pretended to be attacked. It removed all suspicion from her, but a tiny little detail immediately caught my attention. A syringe from Dr. Hartman's medical chest. I asked Claudia if she had any visitors, and since she had to improvise quickly, she told me Dr. Hartman was in her room, which was impossible, because he was in a wheelchair and couldn't make it to the second floor. I must have mixed him up with somebody else. Later that night, when I shared my concerns with Otto, Claudia entered the room. She was obviously worried and wanted us to suspect Walter. When I went to the cellar before going to bed, wearing Giovanni's shoes, Claudia locked me up and turned off the lights. And when I got out, I saw the fresh shoe prints made by a man. It was very clever. How could you, Claudia? Meanwhile, Mr. Peterson had begun to suspect Claudia. He confronted her and demanded a straight answer. At first, Claudia acted innocent. However, after a while, she pretended she had to show him something. When they got to the backyard, Claudia stabbed him and dragged his body as far away as she could. Then she returned to the hotel and spent the night with Giovanni, a perfect alibi. You witch! In order to incriminate Giovanni even more, she smashed his record and scattered its pieces near the cellar door. A cold-blooded killer. What happens next is relatively straightforward. We all thought the killer was either Walter or Giovanni. The only problem was that Walter knew that he was not the killer, and he doubted that Giovanni was capable of murder. He suspected Claudia, and she had to keep him quiet. So many innocent lives! 
And there was one last thing I needed to check. It was more or less clear to me that the killer was Claudia. I just didn't know if she had communicated with someone outside. That's a phone line spot down. Exactly. Yesterday I saw Claudia walking around with a mirror. I decided to do the same. And to my surprise, when I started to reflect the sunlight to the other part of the mountain, I got the same response back. Very clever, Claudia. What do you say? I won't say anything. Not until I see my lawyer. Very well. Police! Open up, police! What is going on here? Is everything all right? Thank God you are here. We have a murderer here. Mrs. Claudia Perret. Mrs. Perret? Is this true? I won't say anything without my lawyer. All right, then. Stay here, please. We need to check the premises. Anna, thank you very much for helping us solve the case. I'm glad I could help. We will take Claudia into custody. That is good to hear. I suggest you stay at the hotel for one more night, as it is too late to set off on a long trip. Do you mind, Otto? No, of course not. After everything that has happened, I am not sure I could sleep here alone anyway. Very well. Have a good rest. Thank you. Goodbye. I have packed all my belongings, and I'm ready to go. Let's go outside. Good morning. Thank you very much, Anna. Good morning. You are welcome, Otto. Well, I hope you will come here again. I will. Anna, I have one question. Yes? I don't really know how to say this. About my other business. Oh, you mean the smuggling? It is none of my business. But you will get caught eventually, Otto. If I were you, I would stop. Thank you. Uh, the car is waiting for you. It will take you to town. Have a safe trip home, Anna. Take care. Thank you.